Here we go. So welcome to the Embroidered Mask Workshop offered by the Minden Hills Cultural Center. Like I said, we've got three parts, intro, demo, and then the stitch along. So let's get going with the intro. Um, the goal of this introduction is to just give you guys a few ideas for how to add embroidery to everyday items. So it is a mask workshop, but these techniques can be used to decorate clothing and bags and absolutely anything made out of fabric. So I'm gonna start by showing you a few things that I've made, and I'll also show you a few things that other people have made, and hopefully that will spark some inspiration for you. So this is a mask that I made for my Aunt Nancy. She's 91 years old, and it's inspired by a, a, Will, um, a William Morris, or actually a May Morris floral pattern. Other things I've stitched, um, I really like to embroider clothing. This is a skirt that I embroidered flowers along the hem of, and the flower pattern came from a picture on Instagram I saw by Yumiko Huguchi. Um, and this took probably an hour and a half per flower, and there are maybe 14 flowers, but I really, I love wearing this skirt on special occasions. So you can stitch directly onto the fabric, or if you're dealing with a fabric that's a little bit too thick to stitch or too thin and flimsy, another thing you can do is to stitch it on normal fabric. And this is just your typical cotton fabric that you would find in any quilting shop. And then you cut it out and then glue it onto a clothing, a piece of clothing that you want to embellish. So you stitch it onto normal fabric, cut it out, and then um, I used interfacing or sorry, not interfacing, but iron-on glue. Um, and then I also stitched around it. So you can stitch directly onto clothes or you can make a patch. Another way to embellish clothes with embroidery is to fix them. <laughs> because often, you know, especially if you're wearing the same clothes all the time, uh, you get holes in things and maybe it's a favorite sweater that you particularly like wearing, you're not ready to throw it out or it has sentimental value. This is an example of decorative darning. Um, and it's a, really, it's a really nice way to keep your clothes in, and add a little bit of character to them as well. This is a pair of jeans that um, I'm actually wearing right now. And as you can see, it was getting some holes in it, um, but I wasn't ready to throw them away. So I put a patch on the inside of the jeans. So there is a patch there, you just can't see it. Um, and then I was using the Sashiko method of drawing a grid on and doing kind of geometric linear stitches. And they add a lot of strength, but they're also decorative. And my favorite thing I think to do um, in terms of embroidery is to make little brooches. So this is stitched onto normal cotton fabric, just like you'd find at any quilting store. And then you cut it out, glue it to felt and make a little brooch. And what I found is that anything can be a brooch. <laughs> so I really, I, that's one way that I really enjoy adding a little bit of embroidery to everyday things. Now I'm going to show you two artists who I really admire. This is Yumiko Huguchi. You can check her out on Instagram. She also has a lot of really good, or I think maybe three have been translated to English, um, good embroidery books. So if you're just getting into stitching, I would really recommend her embroidery books. Um, and. You can get them in Kendall, actually, if you're living in the UK. There's a craft shop in Kendall that carries them. And this is a mask that she embroidered. And this is a little bug bag. Another artist who I really admire is Sam Eldridge. And what she does is she goes around to charity shops and used clothing stores. And she finds clothes that are made out of a good material, a good natural uh, fiber, like cotton or linen or denim. And then she stitches directly onto them. She draws onto them with marker um, and does her stitching and then uh, sells them in her Etsy shop. And you can check her out on Instagram and Etsy. And then this is another example of, uh, as a, of a way to add some crafts to your, to your everyday. This is a bag by my friend Debbie, who's actually joining us here for uh, the workshop today. Debbie makes lots of things um, and often sells them um, and runs workshops for charities in Kendall. And this is a really nice example of a, just a, a plain bag that had a little bit of craft added to it. And I think that should give you some ideas for how to spice up your life with stitching. You can stitch directly onto fabric. You can create a patch and then glue it or sew it onto a piece of fabric. You can make a brooch that's removable. You can decorate a tote bag. Or if your clothes need a little bit of TLC, you can fix them up uh, decoratively with shiko or darning. Um, and if that's an idea that appeals to you, I would Google visible mending because there are, if you go on Pinterest, 
and look at visible mending, you will want to rehash your whole wardrobe and start poking holes in things because um, it, it's really effective. All right, so now we're going to go to the stitching demo part of this workshop. And this demo has three parts. The first part is to learn how to transfer a design onto fabric. And I'm gonna show you six different ways of doing that. And then I'm going to demonstrate chain stitch um, just on a plain piece of fabric. And after that, I'll get out a mask and I'll stitch one letter and one flower onto the mask. And that will be the, that's, that's the demo. And then after we've gone through the demo, then we'll do a q and go through all the questions that you guys are typing into the chat, um, and then we can get stitching. Okay. So, I'm gonna spotlight my video here. So we're starting off with, uh, st starting the demo off by looking at how to transfer designs onto fabric. And I am gonna show you six different ways to do that. Uh, it seems like that's a lot of time to spend on that instead of stitching, but I, I think it's a really important thing to be comfortable with because I think it's one of the things that holds people up from stitching. They, they want to stitch, but they, you know, how do you get that pattern onto fabric? And once you, are, you find a technique that you're comfortable with, you, you'll realize that you can stitch absolutely any pattern onto any fabric. And so you don't need to get a kit, you don't need to get um, anything pre-done. Using tools that you have at home without even a printer, uh, you can get those patterns onto fabric and start stitching. All right, so this, we're gonna switch over to this camera here and I'll start the demo. All right, so the number one way to transfer a design onto fabric is really quite simple. You just draw onto the fabric. Uh, this is an HB pencil. I try not to use anything darker. And if you are doing something like a mask or a piece of fabric that'll be washed often, the pencil will eventually wash out. Um, and sometimes it doesn't. This is an example of a really lovely Christmas ornament that was made uh, with students at a primary school. And I just asked them to draw their pattern onto the felt and then stitch it. And you can see the pencil lines are still there, but that's okay. Um, and actually, if, you, if you're if you looking to do crafts with children, I think drawing onto fabric and then stitching on top of their drawing is a really fun activity. So that's the first way. Number one. But you ask, what if you're dealing with a dark fabric? Well, you can still draw into dark fabrics. Um, if you have even just a pencil crayon, that will work on a dark fabric. Uh, white pencil crayons work really well, pale pink or yellow. Um, my favorite way to get patterns onto dark fabric is using a gel pen. This is um, a fancy jelly roll pen from um, the Above Ground Art Store. And you just have to draw very slowly. It on quite well. I missed my letter there, but there you go. So that works pretty well. But if you are doing a more complicated pattern and you, want, you don't want to draw directly onto the fabric, another thing you can do is create a stencil. And this is actually probably my most pretty much my most common way of, of getting patterns onto fabric, especially if, um, especially if it's a darker one. So here, for example, I took a photo of a flower and then I just created a stencil by tracing, and this works better in a dark room but I created a stencil just by using my iPhone. And you can do this with a photo that you've taken or a photo that you've found. And here we go. Now I have the pattern there and I would just cut it out to create a stencil, okay? And then to get the pattern onto the fabric, 
And I am using scraps here. Um, so this is something that I would normally work on in a hoop, but I've already started cutting it up. So I can't hoop it anymore. So this is, this is kind of too small to, to embroider properly, but it's just a little scrap to show you um, how I would use a stencil to transfer a more complicated pattern onto dark fabric. And this is nice because if you don't have a printer at home, then you can just kind of create the, um, you can just use your phone this way. And you can see I've poked holes into the stencil. And then I normally just kind of lift the fabric a little bit, or sorry, not, not the fabric, the stencil. And I'm not doing this super carefully, but um, got those dots there. And you just finish finish in the detail if you if you need to. But yeah, so that's that's another way to get um, to get a pattern onto a piece of fabric. This is another example of when I've used that technique. I actually just went outside and found a leaf. This is part of a I think a geranium leaf, um, part of a larger leaf, and I traced the leaf onto a piece of paper, and then I traced that onto fabric. Um, stitched it and then cut it out, glued it onto felt, and made it into a little brooch. And we can talk more about brooches after the demo as well, if you guys are interested in brooches, because that is quite a fun way to bring embroidery into, into the everyday. So that's three different ways of transferring. The fourth way to transfer um, patterns onto fabric is to use a light table or a window. And I don't have a light table. I know a couple people in this group might have a light table. So again, I just use my phone and I just Googled the word white and then took a picture of white. And then let's say I've got my pattern here. This is a pattern. Or you can print something out on the computer if it's more complicated. And then put your pattern on top of the light source and the fabric on top. And then again, you kind of need a dark room, but you can just make out that pattern. If it's a beautiful sunny day like today, another thing that you can do, and for this I'll switch back to the main video. Here we go. And I'll swap over to look at the, at the window here. Another thing you can do to transfer a pattern, something you've printed out or drawn onto a piece of paper, is to use the window as a light table. So you just tape your pattern onto the window, tape your fabric on top, and then trace. That's what I did. Yep, here's the window. <laughs> and you put that in a hoop, and you're, and you're good to go. Okay, so what are we at? Was that number, that was the fifth, fourth way of transferring a pattern onto fabric. Now we're on to the fifth way, which is a very old fashioned way of transferring um, complicated patterns onto dark fabric. And this is a technique that I used to transfer this, this design. So I'm gonna switch back to the demo camera. Let's see, all right. So this is my, this is my pattern. And it, I did actually trace real plants. Um, and then I worked it up on the computer and then traced it onto a piece of paper. So that's my kind of reference pattern. And then this is, this way of transferring patterns onto dark fabric is, it's an old fashioned way of doing it and it's called punch and prick. So first you have to draw your pattern onto a piece of paper and then use a pin to poke tiny little holes in it. So this is one of the more time consuming ways. And then you put your pattern piece on top of black fabric. And this is the, this is the material that you need for uh, the punch and prick method. You need some fancy dust and you can get it from, uh, from online embroidery stores or you can just ground up a bit of chalk. And I have a little bit of felt here and I'm just gonna 
pick up some felt, pick up some dust with my felt, and then kind of transfer some of that dust um, through the holes and lift that up. And I've got all these tiny little dots there now. And because I think that these would kind of fall off the fabric as I work with them, um, I would then use my gel pen to just connect the dots so that uh, they don't, so I don't lose them. Okay, so this is, this is a more time consuming way of doing it, but if you don't have a light table, um, it, can be, it can be quite handy. All right, so that is another way of doing it. And if you're thinking one, two, three, four, five, oh, all of those ways look too complicated, I don't want any of that. There is a fifth way or a sixth way, and that is to print your pattern onto the fabric. Um, and I actually went online and paid to have this painting um, printed onto uh, fabric because I was experimenting with the idea of doing some embroidery kits inspired by uh, or with um, copyright free images from some major museums. This one's from the Metropolitan Museum and it's a Van Gogh. And I just wanted to print it onto the fabric and then you can kind of stitch on top of it. And that's a fun technique as well. All right. So that is six different ways to transfer designs onto fabric. So hopefully one of those ways will appeal to you. And now I'm just gonna log back into this computer. Um, now I'm going to demonstrate how to do a simple stitch and then we'll get stitching onto the masks, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate how to do chain stitch on this piece of fabric here. And with chain stitch, chain stitch is actually one of my favorite stitches because it makes good, good lines, it's good for lettering, but you can also use chain stitch as a filler stitch. And actually the leaves for this mask are done in chain stitch. Um, and so to demonstrate this one, I'll switch back to the, to the demo cam. Here we go. Now, normally when I'm doing embroidery, I just kind of curl up on a sofa, but for change, it can be useful to, I'm just gonna go through. Annie, I think I'm gonna, Annie, I'm gonna mute you because I think that there's a dog in the background. Oh, no, it wasn't. Yeah, no, that's mine. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, Elise, I'm just <laughs> muted you there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to demonstrate a chain stitch on this bit of fabric. And I'm also going to show you a trick for how to set up an embroidery hoop if you want to use two hands to stitch. Um, so you can get fancy embroidery hoop holders that are clamps on a bit of wood that will hold your hoop for you so that you can use two hands. Or if you have a stack of books, you can use that as well. Um, so because I would like to have two hands so that I can show you um, how to do chain stitch, I'm going to put the hoop there and then stick. Oh, oof. Stick the books on top without covering my needle. Okay. So this is my kind of ad hoc embroidery holder. So it's kind of handy, handy as well. If you're working with kids, kids often need two hands to, to do embroidery. Um, and this is, this is kind of a, a quick setup that works quite well. So you just have it sticking over the table with something heavy, some books or a brick. So first of all, to thread your needle, Oftentimes I see people trying to thread a needle by holding their needle steady and poking the thread at the needle. Mm -hmm. But I find it, it works better if you hold the thread steady and then lower the needle on top of the thread. And here, I'll just try to zoom in a little bit. 
see if that works. So you can almost not see the thread peeking out and I'm holding it steady between two fingers and then you just lower the needle on top. And then to tie a knot, you make a little X, wrap it loosely three or four times, and then hold it between two fingers and pull through. So then you've threaded your needle and you've got a knot. All right, so now to demonstrate chain stitch, you've got a knot on the end and you come up from the bottom and you pull the thread all the way through, okay? And then you put the needle back down in the exact same spot. And the first time you do it, you just have to be a little careful because you've got a knot on the bottom. And if you catch the knot, then it can get all tangled in the very first motion. Okay, so you pull it up and then you put the needle back down in the same spot. And this is why you want two hands because I'm gonna use, I'm gonna manipulate the needle with my right hand and manipulate the thread with my left. Pull the needle down and you've got this loop. And then I'm gonna bring the needle up inside the loop and pull to create the first stitch. And it's called chain stitch because you create a chain of stitches. So the next time I put the stitch down, I'm needle down, I'm gonna put it down back inside the loop. So it kind of has three motions. You go down is number one, two, you create the loop, three, you come back inside the loop Got it. and pull. So one, two, three. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit more. Mm -hmm. See one, two, create the loop, three, and just go back inside the loop. Sorry, back, yep, yeah, and then create the loop and pull. So that's how you create one chain. When you're ready, you're finished with that, you just do one final stitch on the outside of the loop to stop it from going anywhere. So there you've created one line of chain stitch. Oh. And then you can actually use that same technique to make little flowers using the same idea but this variation is called lazy daisy stitch. So again, you go back down in the same hole. That's one. You hold onto your loop. That's two. And then three. You secure your loop. And I'm going to take a tiny stitch on the outside to create one petal. And then there's my next petal. I'll do four little petals. But you can, when you're doing flowers, this is a nice technique because you can do sparse petals or you can really fill them in, uh, especially if you're using a thick thread, you can get kind of a 3D technique with this. All right, so that's chain stitch um, on a plain piece of fabric in a hoop. But when you're stitching on other fabrics like masks or fabric or clothing, sometimes you have to um, do things a little bit differently. So I'll show you how to flip this over, show you how to finish off your, your threads, which is just by tying a knot. Uh, I'm just going to do a couple stitches at the back. and cut it off. And there we go, we've tied that off. So that's how it works um, on plain fabric in a hoop. Now I would like to demonstrate the same stitch on a mask using different threads. Let's just move this bit over. This is the mask that I did for the demo, and I it is all done in chain stitch. Let me just line the camera back up now that I've moved things around. And we'll zoom in a bit as well. 
So this is all chain stitch. And like I said, I really like chain stitch for letters because I think it creates a nice flow. And then this is that chain stitch or uh, lazy daisy stitch um, for flowers. So what I'm going to do now for the rest of the demo is I'm going to stitch one letter and one flower. And this bit might seem a little bit slow because the rest of the demo has been a little bit um, artificially fast because I've prepped things in advance, but I'd like to do some slow stitching now because I think that there's some tricky things and a little bit of finesse that comes, not finesse exactly, but things that you come across um, as you're doing the, this, this one letter. So first of all, I'm going to get my pattern onto the fabric just by writing it on. Okay. And you can see that I wrote very slowly there because that seems to, to work better to get the ink flowing. I've got a little bit of kind of a scrappy piece of thread here. Um, I'm using DMC thread. This is a slightly different color. Uh, DMC or anchor or any kind of craft thread normally comes uh, in this kind of, it's called a skein. And the, the, the threads that you get like this have six threads all together. So this is the whole thing. This is actually six tiny little threads. And if you want a thick line, you use all six. But if you want to do a thinner line, you divide them up. And so this one only has four threads left in it because I've already used some of this yellow. Um, and so if I want to take, and I'm just going to use two strands. And to do that, you can either peel it away like this, or I might just take one, take hold of one strand, hold the rest of it with my finger, and just pull slowly. And that separates it. And I want two strands, so I'm going to do that again. Isolate one strand, hold the rest of it with my fingers, and then pull slowly. If you pull too quickly, it'll create a giant knot or a big mess, and that does happen. So just go slow. And then I've got my two strands here. Try to make sure they're the same length. And then I'm gonna thread my needle the same way that I did with that blue thread by holding the thread steady between my fingers and lowering my needle onto it. And then create a knot by making that T, wrapping it around and pulling through. And I'll just trim that as well because that knot is a little bit big. All right, so we're almost ready to start stitching the letter H on this mask. This mask is one that I actually made using a tutorial by Victoria, who, who's part of this workshop today. And I'll include a link to that mask making tutorial um, in the blog post that has the recording for this video. And this mask has multiple layers. It has two layers and then a third layer uh, to hold a filter if you like. So I don't want to stitch through all three layers. I only want to stitch through these two. I'm gonna zoom back out just a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna put my needle here to start. And then I'm actually going to put my hand inside the mask to stop myself from stitching through all three layers. And so um, unfortunately the letter H is going to be upside down as I stitch, but I'm just going to stitch this whole letter H in chain stitch because there are a couple things here that might come up for you as you're stitching onto clothes. So first of all, you'll notice for this, I'll zoom right in. Before, when I was using the hoop, I put the needle all the way through the fabric and pulled it down. But it's a little bit harder to do that with the mask because I don't have space. Um, so I'm actually shortening the steps by putting the needle through and then catching the loop in one motion. So you can see that there is still that loop, but I'm just kind of catching it in one go. And then I go inside that previous stitch, come back out a few millimeters, and then I catch, catch.
catch the loop. And I'm just gonna do this for a little while. Um, this is the bit here that I think might seem a little bit slow, but I think it's, I think it's useful to go through one letter from start to finish because there are a couple of things that come up at the beginning and end of a letter. Um, so, but if you have, while I'm stitching this letter, if anybody has any, um, any questions, oh, I'm not on the screen. There we go. Any questions about this, give me a shout. As I'm turning can be a little bit tricky as well with a uh, chain stitch on a, on, a, on a curve. And sometimes I will make the stitches closer together on, on a curve. You just wanna make sure that you catch the loop every time. And my stitches here are probably might be a little bit um, less even than if I were just doing this slowly. I am trying to stitch a little bit quickly. Uh, another thing that you will notice, um, hold on here. All right, so what do you do when you get to a previous line? You can actually decide if you want, you can go under, but I'm going to stitch right over top. So I'm gonna bring the needle up underneath that line and we're just gonna stitch over right over top of it. Okay. Uh, another thing that I wanna point out when you're working with chain stitch is that the direction that you're going matters quite a bit. So I'm going from here to there, I'm moving in that direction. And so I need to pull the thread in that direction. So if I, so I'm pulling the thread in the direction that my line is going and then I create a neat stitch. If I were to pull the thread this way, my loop disappears. So you have to uh, pull the thread in the direction that you're going. There we go. And I might do two more stitches. Okay. And that's the end of that line. So to finish that line, I take one stitch not on the inside of the loop, but on the outside to anchor it. And then I'm going to bring the thread back up on the line here, and it's gonna travel underneath. And I've actually brought it up, not, uh, I've brought it up where there's a little bit of a gap between my stitch and the stitch I want to connect the line to. And that's because I have a trick for making a smooth connection. And that's to do one plain stitch. So that's one just plain, plain stitch. It's not a chain stitch. And then I'm gonna bring my needle back up in the middle of that thread, which technically is kind of a split stitch. Let's see if I can do this so that you can see it clearly. I'm bringing the needle back up inside that thread and then I will continue with chain stitch. So that just creates kind of a nice smooth line because one of the things about chain stitch is that each stitch is kind of clunky. So if you want to have a smooth transition, then just do a straight stitch and bring the, bring the chain stitch into that. So I think I'm gonna finish that bit, or no, I'll do, I'll do the two more stitches to finish this one. Just do two big stitches. And you can see that the thread is starting to get a little bit um, tangled. Because thread, a single piece of thread is made out of um, smaller strands of thread that have been twisted around uh, it just likes to get twisted. So every once in a while, if my thread starts to get a little bit unruly, I'll zoom out for this. I just put the needle at the bottom and just kind of 
straighten the thread out a little bit like that. And it makes it less twisted and that makes it less likely to get tangled. So I'll do one more stitch for this H and then I'll show you my favorite fr trick for doing uh, tidy and nice looking letters. So there's the letter H there. Um, when I stitched hello on this side, I actually went back and made one line of each letter a little bit thicker. And I will show you why. Whenever I'm doing letters, whether it's something that I am stitching or I'm drawing, my favorite trick for making letters look nice is to draw it out once and then to go back and just make a thicker line on one side. And then suddenly, magically, it looks really fancy. And this works in a lot of different contexts, okay? So after I've stitched the whole, after I've stitched the whole word, I would then go back and I'll just travel through. I'd go back and stitch one more line that way. And again, I actually am gonna, whenever I am introducing another line, I'm gonna do just a straight stitch. So that's not a chain stitch, it's just, just a straight stitch. And then come back in the middle of that straight stitch and do chain stitch from there. So I'll just do a couple more stitches here and then we'll have a look at the flower. I'll do doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Just gonna stitch right to the bottom of this H probably two more stitches. And the distance between where you put the needle in and where the needle comes out, that's the distance of, your, of a single chain or a single stitch. And if you can, you want to keep that, um, keep it pretty consistent. It doesn't have to be, um, but they don't have to be as small as this. You can make them longer um, or you can, you can make them smaller. And then I'm finished that letter now. So I will just do one final stitch at the bottom. And then just do a couple whip stitches or just some random, random stitches at the back. Tie a knot at the end. And there you have it. There is one letter stitched in chain stitch. And this pattern has a couple little flowers on it as well. So I might stitch just one flower to, uh, to stitch the flower. I always just use two arm lengths of thread. I never use more than that. And then for this one, I think I want three strands. So right now it's got all six strands and I'm just gonna kind of play with the thread until it splits itself a little bit. And then very slowly pull it apart. You can see it's twirling a little bit. If you do this too quickly, it will just knot up. And if you have a third person, it helps if you can pull and have, um, and have somebody else holding the base of the thread. Here we go, just do that slowly. And I've separated my thread now uh, from six, just to have these three strands. And you can see it's going really twirly. If I started to stitch with a thread like that, it would just go into knots. So I'm just going to kind of play with the thread a little bit to get some of those twists out until it's flat. 
or a little bit straighter. And if your thread is being really difficult, or if you're working with um, silks or something a little bit more finicky, you can use a teapot and a kettle and actually steam the thread. If you, you use steam to get the kinks and bumps out of your thread and then it will be a little bit easier to work with. So I'm just gonna add one flower, one flower right here. And, or no, I'll do one, do one there. So again, I don't want to go through all three layers. I just want to go through the top two. Probably trim that knot a little bit. And I'm going to decide that my flower is going to be, you know, this, this is one petal length. So I'm going to put the needle back down in the same spot where it started. And then bring the needle out where I've decided I want my petal to end. And then secure it with one stitch at the bottom. So I'll just zoom in a little bit there. And then I find if you if you want, you can use your um, you can use your marker to put some little dots in a circle. But I find that you know flowers are kind of wonky shapes. And so it's nice to just freehand it a little bit. But I do tend to do a couple, almost like a clock face. So you can see how I did those ones opposite each other. Then I'll move a little bit closer to the center. Then I'll do, you know, depending on how full I wanted the flower to be, I might do uh, four like that, or maybe I'll do a six petaled flower. Then again, I'll go and do the opposite one, just so that I have a sense of where, uh, how the flower is taking shape. I find it useful to kind of picture a clock in my mind and do you can see how it's getting a little bit persnickety here. This is partly because the tail of the thread is, is attached. So another thing that you want to watch out for as you're stitching is that you're not getting the tail of your uh, thread stuck in your main stitching. So I'm just going to take a little tug. There we go and shorten, pull the thread so that the tail is a little bit shorter. All right, so I've got four petals and then I'll do two more petals. Two. Okay. So this is all done with the same stitch really, um, but you can use all sorts of stitches. Another one that I really like to use for letters is, um, is split stitch because it's quite similar to chain stitch, but you can also use back stitch, which is a, it, which is a, a nice one because it creates a line without any, any holes in holes. Okay, so I'm just tying this off. That's not tomorrow. There we go. Oh, shoot. All right, so there we have it. Using one stitch, uh, just chain stitch, we've done one letter and one flower. So that is the intro and the demo part of the workshop. And it lasted a little bit longer than I thought, but there we go. And so now what I'd like to do is um, I'll go through and just have a look at some of the questions you guys have asked in the chat function. Um, and if, if there's one of the questions that you were asking, feel free to unmute and chime in. And then we can do part three, which is really sit and stitch and chat. And if any of you are working on anything right now that you want to troubleshoot, then let me know and we can give you the spotlight and look at what you're stitching and then have uh, just have a chat about anything in more detail.